Hello. This installation video will follow your printed installation instructions step by step. We will install the bottom kit and the top kit on two different throttle housings and cover any troubleshooting along the way. Your kit will include everything you see here. Installation Part 1 – Finding the Correct Friction Pad for Your Bike if you'd like to read our installation instructions in a different language, please go to atlasthrottlelock.com, click on the menu, and then select Universal Fit. By installing the Atlas Throttle Lock, you are agreeing to our terms and conditions found on our website. Let's get started. First, we need to determine the throttle housing style on your motorcycle. We have identified three different throttle housing styles seen on most motorcycles. We will reference these styles as A, B, and C, which can be found in the throttle housing guide on page five. Most drawings show the throttle without a grip so you can easily see the throttle housing. You do not need to remove your grip to install the throttle lock. All throttle housings have a primary surface. Some also have a secondary surface. The primary surface is highlighted in yellow and the secondary surface is highlighted in red. You will also use one of these surfaces for the friction pad to press against. To assist you during the install, we have designed a nifty tool called the Atlas Key. You will use it to select the correct friction pad for your throttle housing. Our adjustable friction pads come in four different thicknesses. Most throttle housings have a seam where the two halves join. This seam needs to be flushed to provide a smooth surface for the friction pad to press against. Sometimes the throttle housing is assembled with an uneven seam. If the seam is uneven, follow this process to make it flush. Loosen the bolts holding the housing together. Align the two molded pieces. Then tighten the bolts back down while ensuring the seam is flush and smooth. We're going to check for fitment on the primary surface for all throttle housing styles, starting with style A. Step 1. Go ahead and grab friction pad number 3. Step 2. Slide the Atlas key into the friction pad from the top until the cut line is pointing at the end of the pegs and the clearance bar is at the top of the pad. Step 3. Hold the Atlas key below the friction pad and place the clearance bar against the throttle tube between the grip flange and the primary surface. Step four, check for one millimeter of clearance between the friction pad and the primary surface on the throttle housing. It's okay for the back of the friction pad to touch the grip flange. Pad number three was too thick for our throttle. So we went down to pad number two. You will want to use the thickest friction pad that will fit while still maintaining one millimeter of clearance between the friction pad and the primary surface. For throttle style A, if the pad fits with one millimeter of clearance, congratulations, you found your pad. Turn to page nine, labeled installing the friction pad. Now let's talk about throttle styles B and C, which are very similar to each other. This green line indicates what we call the inside edge of the friction pad. For throttle housing styles B and C, you need to make sure the entire inside edge of the friction pad is aligned with the primary surface. Using throttle housing C as our example, we have confirmed that the inside edge has adequate contact with the primary surface. Once the inside edge is aligned with the primary surface and you have one millimeter of clearance, Congrats! Jump ahead to page 9, labeled Installing the Friction Pad. If the inside edge isn't fully aligned, no worries. We'll use the secondary surface. Here you can see the secondary surface on our C-style throttle housing. Step 1. Find friction pad number 4. Step 2. Slide the Atlas key into the friction pad from the top until the cut line is pointing at the first notch in from the end of the pegs. The clearance bar will not touch the pad at this point. Step three, 
Hold the Atlas key below the friction pad and place the clearance bar against the throttle tube between the grip flange and the secondary surface. If the friction pad clears the curve ridge at the first notch, move to step four. If it still contacts the curved ridge, then slide the cut line to the second notch, which will move the friction pad even farther away from the throttle tube and the curved ridge. Step four, check for one millimeter of clearance between the friction pad and the secondary surface. Measure the clearance with the back of the friction pad touching the grip flange. Find the pad thickness that gives you the clearance you need. Once you have clearance, grab some scissors or a knife and cut the pegs at the notch you choose. Do not leave the key in the friction pad when cutting the pegs and don't cut the pegs off of pad number one. Now it's time to install the friction pad onto the throttle lock. Step one, start off by removing the clamp arm from the body piece. Step two, if you haven't done so already, remove the friction pad from the Atlas key. Step three, click the engagement button on the throttle lock. Step four, now slide the friction pad into the stopper arm until it bottoms out. You will see the pegs make contact with the cutout. Lastly, disengage the throttle lock. Installation part two, mounting the Atlas throttle lock to your throttle tube. For our first example, we'll be installing the bottom kit using the primary surface of an A-style throttle housing. Step one, hold the body piece with its teeth touching the throttle tube between the throttle housing and the grip flange. Step two, take the clamp arm and slide the clamp arm tooth into the V cutout. Step three, align the clamp arm's ratcheting teeth with the ratcheting channel on the body piece. Now press the clamp arm two clicks into the channel. Step four, take the bolt and thread it in two full rotations using the long end of the L key. Step five, pull the bolt flange towards the head of the bolt until it touches. Keep the bolt flange at the bolt head while you ratchet the clamp arm tight. Press hard on the rear joggle to see if you get one last click from the ratchet channel. Step six. Make sure the friction pad has one millimeter of clearance from the primary surface. Step seven. Pay attention as you tighten the bolt to avoid over tightening it. Some throttles are plastic while others are metal, which alters the torque required to hold the bolt in place. So feel for a snug fit. If your throttle doesn't rotate freely after tightening the bolt, loosen the bolt a quarter turn, then test the throttle. Repeat until the throttle rotates freely. For our second example, we'll be installing a top kit on the secondary surface of a C-style throttle housing. Step one, hold the body piece with its teeth touching the throttle tube between the throttle housing and the grip flange. Step two, take the clamp arm and slide the clamp arm tooth into the V cutout. Step three, align the clamp arm's ratcheting teeth with the ratcheting channel on the body piece. Now, press the clamp arm two clicks into the channel. Step four. Take the bolt and thread it in two full rotations using the long end of the L key. Step five. Pull the bolt flange towards the head of the bolt until it touches. Keep the bolt flange at the bolt head while you ratchet the clamp arm tight. 
press hard on the rear joggle to see if you can get one last click from the ratchet channel. Step six. Interference with the straight ridge can cause the throttle to catch when the throttle lock is engaged, and this must be avoided. The first solution is to clock your throttle lock to a position away from the straight ridge. You can do this by mounting it at a position where the friction pad would clear the straight ridge at all points of rotation. The second solution is to clock the throttle housing. You can do this by rotating the throttle housing on the handlebar in a way where the straight ridge would clear the friction pad at all positions of rotation. To rotate your throttle housing, slightly loosen the bolts holding it to the handlebar, rotate the housing, then tighten it back to its specified torque, ensuring the seams are still flush. Check with your motorcycle's manufacturer for further details. Here's how to clock the housing to prevent the bottom kit from contacting the straight ridge. We rotated the housing clockwise around 45 degrees, then mounted the bottom kit with the text reading horizontally. Like before, slightly loosen the bolts holding it to the handlebar, rotate the housing, and then tighten it back to the specified torque, ensuring the seams are still flush. Once everything is clocked to avoid interference with the straight ridge, check for the proper one millimeter of clearance between the friction pad and the secondary surface. Step seven. Like before, please pay attention as you tighten the bolt to avoid over tightening it. Some throttles are plastic while others are metal, which alters the torque required to hold the bolt in place. So feel for a snug fit. If your throttle doesn't rotate freely after tightening the bolt, loosen the bolt a quarter turn, then test the throttle. Repeat until the throttle rotates freely. On the rare occasion that you might want to remove your throttle lock, follow these directions. Step one, unscrew the bolt with the provided L key. Step two, pull the bolt flange away from the body piece until the clamp arm comes loose. If the clamp arm is not easily removable by hand, place a flathead screwdriver under the small pry tab on the clamp arm. Using extreme care, lightly twist the screwdriver to slowly pry the tab away from the body piece, one ratchet at a time. Slowly slide the clamp arm off the body piece. And that's it! Get out there and enjoy your Atlas throttle lock, safely on the open road.